Assalamu alaikum, hello and welcome to another episode of It's All Relative. Thank you so much for joining us once again. Today we're going to talk about starting your own business. Many of us may have some great business ideas, hobbies or even passions that we wish to pursue on a full-time basis. However, we all know that working full-time or 9 to 5 in a corporate job comes with it certain levels of comfort or stability. For example, we have our bi-weekly paychecks, uh, some great perks and benefits from the company, even uh, scheduled or fixed working hours. Therefore, it is the biggest challenge for most people is moving from the stability of your 9 to 5 or full time job and move towards the instability of pursuing your dreams or your passions or even your business ideas. Therefore, it gives me great pleasure today to have with us Riza Kajavi, who is the co founder and CEO of Shoelace, a software company that provides firms around the world with marketing services. It is my pleasure to have him here with us today and he is going to take us through the journey of creating Shoelace, a company that raised almost a, a more than a million dollars in capital and also grew to a team of 13 people within two years and today has over 1,500 clients around the world. Reza, thank you so much for being with us today. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank Thanks you. Thank me. you very much. So let's start things off today with a little bit about not only yourself, mm -hmm. but Shoelace as a, as a company. Maybe that's where we can start off today. Sure. Um, so I uh, kind of always wanted to do startups and, and um, start my own business. Um, I dropped out of university to start my first company. Um, it was a on-demand dry cleaning business with my brother that we created in Montreal. And the idea was, instead of having people drag their clothes all the way to the dry cleaner, could right. we make it so that they simply request the pickup through their phone and then somebody comes to their house, mm -hmm. picks up the dry cleaning and then delivers it back the next day. And so um, we worked on that idea for about four or five years. Uh, we didn't raise capital for that business, so it was fully bootstrapped. And mm -hmm. so um, we were doing everything. We were uh, doing the deliveries ourselves. We were doing the marketing ourselves. And it was kind of just a, a two person company. And, right. uh, we were forced to kind of do everything ourselves. Um, and neither of us were technical, so we couldn't um, build the software or build the app that we needed to, to make it work. So in the beginning, people were just like calling to request their pickup. But over time, it was pretty clear that this can be streamlined pretty well through software, but we didn't have any money to hire anyone. And so I started learning how to, uh, how to write code and to, and to create the software myself. And at first, it was just about um, how, do we, how do I make it so I can communicate with these web developers because they're kind mm. of talking things that, that I don't understand. And so over time, I just dabbled with it myself. And then um, I was able to create all the software for the business um, myself. That, and um, over the few years, it was a pretty kind of robust piece of software that um, had the online ordering system. It had a tablet in, in the car for the deliveries. Mm. Um, and in each of the dry cleaning plants that we worked with, there was a kind of station there that we used to print receipts right. and things like that. And um, anyway, um, we ended up selling that company to one of the dry cleaning partners that uh, we were working with. And um, that's when I, I joined a startup in Toronto, which is kind of my first experience of a, of a stable job, which was pretty cool. So um, that was your first nine to five? That was the first right. uh, kind of nine to five experience. And that's where I met my two um, co-founders. And then we ended up uh, leaving that company to start Shoelace. Okay. All right. So, so the first thing that I wanted to, 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 dwell, in, to, to dwell into is what made you leave the nine to five because uh, as you said you know you you started off as an entrepreneur out of university mm -hmm. um, then you know you you joined uh, or you started the nine to five so what was it about the nine to five that that made you feel that okay you know what there's probably something bigger that I'm after here this is probably not for me right um, so even after the dry cleaning business, I kind of knew that someday I wanted to start a company again. So okay. it was kind of in, in the back of my mind. Um, but after kind of many years of not taking much of a salary and just like working insane amounts of hours, it felt right. like it would be pretty cool to, to join a company this time, uh, take a little bit of a break from this chaotic lifestyle. Right. And, um, uh, but also learn what it's like to be a part of a really fast growing company, which is kind of the uh, what would have happened to our company if we would have like raised capital or grew a lot faster. And so okay. I definitely wanted to have the experience of, of working somewhere like that. And 
uh, it was really cool that after you know all this time, it was now uh, making a stable income, and it was like yeah, yeah. Uh, it was a lot more relaxed than that kind of previous um, experience. But uh, it's kind of this like bug that if it if it hits you, it kind of just never goes away. That you <laughs> that you know right. you want to do it again. Yeah. And so um, even though it was it was really cool to work at a company like that and um, have some stability, I knew that um, I knew that at some point I just I just want to do it again. It's kind of hard to explain. Uh, it's just this. Um, I just knew that it, it's what I want to do with my life. Um, and in particular, when I met my two co-founders that we started Shoelace together, um, I just knew that we were such a good team together that we can that we had enough kind of technical skills in-house right. to build anything we want. And we had enough curiosity to go after problems that we found were interesting. And um, it kind of made me realize the importance of having a really strong founding team. and. Um, having met those two guys, uh, I knew that the likelihood of, of um, meeting business partners that were as good a match as the three of us were is very unlikely. It's very difficult okay. to, to be able to find co-founders or people to start a company with that y you don't end up you know, having issues with or a fallout Correct. with. And um, to assemble kind of the perfect founding team is, is probably the most difficult part of uh, starting a company. And when, when the three of us um, worked together a lot, knew that we were such a perfect kind of trio, um, it felt crazy not to do it. And so that was probably the biggest reason of just having um, the, 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 right, the right team to, to do something like this and not wanting to lose that opportunity. No, excellent. Um, maybe you can tell us a little bit about Shoelace. Uh, this is the company that you started. Right. Uh, just maybe take us through what, uh, what, what was the idea behind Shoelace and what Shoelace does. Right. Um, so Shoelace is a, is a software company that is automating the role of a marketing expert for businesses. So very specifically, there's this marketing strategy called retargeting, which when somebody visits your website and leaves without buying anything, retargeting is this advertising strategy that allows you to get in front of those people mm. again, mm. Um, whether it's on Facebook or Instagram or elsewhere, to encourage them to come back and complete their purchase. It's a very profitable activity. Um, the biggest brands use it. Um, and it just, it works really, really well. But it turns out to not be very simple to, to, to set up and it's kind of difficult to use the tools that exist. And to think about the strategy of like, what should my budget be? Who should I be targeting? What should go in my campaigns? Yeah. How long should I show these retargeting ads? All mm -hmm. of these questions that generally a retargeting expert would know how to do, but most businesses don't have the time to become an expert or the budget to hire an expert. And so kind of left stranded. So what we said is, can we take the role of a retargeting expert and like imagine uh, one human that is the best person in the world at retargeting right. And can we turn that person into software so that we can deliver mm. it to all the businesses in the world so that they don't have to learn to become an expert themselves or um, they don't have to pay a huge amount to hire an expert because we're delivering it through software. Right. Um, so that's what Shoelace does. So I'm guessing, that, uh, so when, when we're browsing on our Facebook timelines or yeah. Instagram feeds, when we see uh, perhaps a cart that we may have abandoned some time ago, right. you're one of the people behind it, I right. guess. Right, <laughs> it, it could be one of our clients, exactly. Okay, okay, good to know. Um, so now that you, you, know, you, you had the idea mm -hmm. you know, behind you know, starting your own, your own company, this is what you wanted the company to do, maybe you could take us through the, the journey because mm -hmm. I'm sure it's not, it's not just an overnight thing. I mean, you have to, A, as you said, uh, you know, assemble a team, mm -hmm. which you did with your, uh, the three of you. Uh, obviously, the idea was in place, the team was in place, but I'm sure there's a lot of stuff that came after it. So, you know, you've got your, your funding or the money that you're going to use to start your business right. with, your workspace. Uh, t take us through that journey. What are the, 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 th the key things that, that kind of uh, complete, completed you to where you are right. uh, today? Yeah, <clears throat> so what's actually interesting is that for us, it didn't start with the idea. It started with the team. And, ah, okay. um, and I think in a, people kind of... Um, give way too much importance to, to an idea. The, the idea itself is actually pretty trivial. And it, um, the, the way it happened for us was that we actually left our jobs without an idea. We didn't ah. have a particular, uh, particular idea that we wanted to solve. We had some ideas around like right. problems that right. we wanted to solve, but it wasn't like, this is it. Let's like, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's just go crazy with this one thing. And um, particularly for like software businesses or any time that you're trying to like, innovate through technology it's not as clear as like 
this is what I want to do because maybe this is something you want to do, but nobody cares. No right. business wants right. it or no customer wants to pay for it. And so for us, the journey actually left with the three of us knowing that we make a perfect team and that um, kind of being on the same page about ideas not being that valuable. Mm. And it's through the mm. execution of like working on something and then over time it leads you to discover interesting things. So it's almost like there's like a discovery period that's important in like in, in starting a company like this. So when we left, we had a theme that we thought was really interesting and it was this idea that the future of software has to be a lot more intelligent. Today we use software tools and you go into it and you have to like learn how to do things, mm. you have to click buttons, mm. you have to think about the strategy to like to, to use it. But Correct. in our view, it was like if you fast forward to 15 years from now, 20 years from now, surely software itself is going to be so intelligent that it can deliver value to you without you having to do anything or learn anything. And so that was the theme that we were interested in. And then kind of spare you the details of the <laughs> little experiments that we ran with different mini ideas around like, OK, we, we care about this theme. What um, what use cases could we apply this to? But um, we tried a few different ones, which, again, I won't go into, but then it led us to this discovery right. that most businesses are aware of what retargeting is. They know mm -hmm. that it's important. They know that it's valuable, right. but they struggle to do it. And um, when, when we made that discovery, it was like, OK, can we apply this theme that we care about, which is um, making software be intelligent and not have people have to learn anything, can we apply that to retargeting? Okay. And so this probably happened a month and a half after we left our job. So wow. that first okay. kind of five yeah. weeks was just through experimenting with a bunch of different things. Um, so that was kind of the first so first phase is, can you find the right team to build something yes. with? And that was like a check for us. Then it was like, can you spend some time to figure out an idea that's worth pursuing and run some little experiments, talk mm. to customers, mm. build a little prototype of it, see if anyone's going to use it, as opposed to being like having this idea that you're obsessed about and spend 12 months building Correct. it and then release it to the right. world only to realize right. that nobody So you had cares. multiple options. Yeah. Right. And so... That, then when we started saying, okay, there's something here, people are using it, I think we're onto something, then it becomes, can we raise a little bit of money to help us pursue this idea? Um, because we, you know, to, to hire people and to like build this right. thing, uh, we couldn't kind of not raise any money to do it because it, it, right. uh, it, it would have taken way too long. And so then the, the challenge becomes, um, could we go and convince investors to uh, give us some money to pursue this idea? Um, and so we ended up joining an accelerator program in Boulder, Colorado called okay. Boomtown, which was pretty cool. And we spent um, four months there, uh, sorry, three months there. Um, and that was an, an environment where, um, you know, there was, there was investors that would come to the accelerator and there was this kind of demo day at the end where you right. could pitch your idea to a room full of investors. Um, and so... Then we were able to secure a little bit of capital to uh, to start, and then we came back to Toronto um, and started building out a team and, uh, and started the business. Yeah. Wow! Um, I'm going to take you back a little bit, uh, just for the benefit of, of mm -hmm. our audience. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about what an accelerator is? Yeah. Uh, maybe just a little bit of a few specifics, sure. uh, just to kind of bring bring into context what what you went through. Yeah. So an accelerator is kind of uh, there's there's a bunch of these programs. There uh, there, there there exists accelerators in Canada and the U.S. And the idea generally is like this three-month program where um, something like 10 startups, and in some of the accelerators, like 100 startups that oh, go wow. through the program together, um, enter this accelerator program, and they work with mentors and advisors that mm. help them work through their idea and accelerate their idea. So ah, generally, okay. um, you, you go into one of these accelerators if you already have an idea with some traction that you want to kind of right. m make it move a little bit faster. And typically towards the end, um, they have a pretty good network of investors and there's this um, event that kind of culminates the program mm. called Demo Day. Demo Day, right. Each startup goes up on stage and pitches their, uh, their idea for about four, four or five minutes. And then there's a kind of room full of investors that um, that if you're kind of uh, meet meet the right ones, they'll fund your business. Would 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 all the participants on demo day get an investment, or do do some of them just kind of fizzle out after? after yeah, not that? necessarily. It's like it's it's the same with startups in general. Most startups just won't uh, won't survive um, past kind of the, the the first few years because it's just so difficult to build something that is useful because there's so many right. people starting companies. Um, and so, yeah, I think um, 
a lot of people will fail at their first idea, learn from that, try something else. So right. I think there's this cool um, culture in these accelerators and within investors and others that it's okay to fail at these companies because what you'll learn from it um, will kind of give you the insights to start another company or something like that. Okay. Um, so it, does, would it make sense to assume then that one accelerator is enough? Um, do, do you see companies coming out of one accelerator maybe using that funding that they've received mm -hmm. and then maybe running out at some point? Would they join another accelerator then? Is, is that something normal? Yeah, so there, there are like um, accelerators that focus on different stages. So there are okay. certain accelerators that take companies that are really, really early. And then there are other accelerators that take on companies that are a little bit further along, a right. little bit more matured. And so, yeah, I think uh, it's, it's, it's not uncommon for companies to do kind of okay. uh, one or two accelerators Fair at enough. this point. Um, yeah. Okay, so, so we talked about the, the conception of the idea. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about your team members, the, the team that you built. Uh, we spoke about your funding that you, that you raised from the accelerator program. Uh, just a small point. Uh, what about your physical workspace? I mean, where do you work out of? Do you work out of your basement? Right. Or, uh, I mean, what, how, where, where do you work? Right. So we went through a couple of evolutions of this. Our first work environment was my co-founder's kitchen table. So we, went, okay. we spent nice. the first uh, few months there. Um, and then we had a friend of ours give us some, uh, an extra room in their office. So we spent a little bit of time there. Okay. Um, and when we went through the accelerator in Boulder, uh, they give you workspace too. Oh, so we've been nice. kind of going all over the place. Right. When we came back to Toronto, we went um, to the DMZ, uh, which is uh, an incubator accelerator as well. And um, they provided us some space. And um, as of next week, we're signing a lease on our, on our uh, own office space nah, so for the very nice. first Congratulations. time. Congratulations. Yeah, thanks. We'll be going very into nice. our, our own space. Good, good. So it's very, um, very exciting. Uh, obviously, I can only imagine how exciting the world of startups is. Uh, um, I, I know, you know, we spoke before filming, uh, you, yeah. you did mention that you, uh, you, you did go to San Francisco a lot. Yeah. Um, uh, why? Uh, how, how was that? Uh, I mean, I know it's the startup capital of the world. Uh, yeah. um, so can you tell us a little bit more about your, the San Francisco experience and how, how beneficial was it uh, for you to, to spend time there and for you and your team members yeah. uh, to spend time there and kind of just feel the vibe of startups, I guess? Yeah, so it, for sure in, in, the, in, the, in the category of like, software and technology businesses, there, there, there is something very special about San Francisco, the Bay Area, Silicon Valley. It's like, it, and it's mostly around the um, collection of people that are there. Some mm -hmm. of the biggest companies in the world, Facebook, Google, all of the right. kind of giant tech companies that you Correct. aspire to are all there. And um, a lot of the best investors in the world are there. And um, it's just like, there, there's nothing particularly special about the, the physical location, but it's just the the people that are there make that place really, really special. And for the longest time, um, it was impossible to imagine that any giant tech company would come from anywhere other than mm -hmm. San Francisco. I think that's changing a little bit. You have like companies like Shopify that are based in Ottawa that are like, phenomenal companies and right. respected worldwide. And Correct. I, I think that there is some change happening that, um, that you don't have to be based in, in San Francisco yeah. to build it, but um, spending time there and seeing what makes that place so special is is a really good thing to do. And for, we, we got a, the chance to go there a little bit. And um, yeah, I think one of the biggest benefits of going there is just uh, how ambitious people there are. Right. So you might have like a startup idea and you're like, oh, if, you know, if, if we can get to like, Fifty million dollars in revenue—that'll okay. be so cool. And then, like over there, like fifty million dollars in revenue. No, like, <laughs> how do we get to like a ten billion dollar company? Right. And it's like it's uh, it's cool because it kind of pushes the boundaries of right. thinking everyone bigger. thinks thinks big. Yeah. I guess there. Yeah, and so I think uh, I think I think it's really a, a really interesting place for that. All right, excellent. Um, any future plans that you have for Shoelace? Now that you've started, you have a couple years in now. Um, you know, what is your strategy going forward? Is this something that you uh, you want to see right to the death? This is twenty years down the line, or is it? Uh, uh, do you do you, do you want to maybe set your sights on something else once you have kind of grown the business to a certain point, and then set your sights on something else? Yeah, it's what's interesting is that every day that goes by, we realize just how early in in the process of building what we're building we are. Um, because so if you think about what we're trying to do is to take a, a role of a human being, right. uh, a human expert, 
who's the best in the world at retargeting, and then turn it into software so that millions of people can Correct. use it. We've started that process, and we, we're able to deliver a lot of value to our mm -hmm. clients because it still it, it, it works. But there's so uh, much room for us to grow in terms of building it, right. and uh, I think we, we think a lot more about it in in, in terms of like um, how far can we build this product? How 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 much uh, how far can we take? Uh, the role of making expertise accessible. So right. if you think about um, in the world, most people don't have access to an expert, but most people, most businesses need an expert. And Correct. so by starting with retargeting and proving that we can automate the role of a human mm -hmm. expert in one thing, I think we'll get really, really good at that. And then it'll just be like um, so many different areas that we can that we can expand it to. I think we don't really have an end in sight in terms of like good. going on to something else. It's just right. how far can we take this? and uh, how um, how far can we go in this mission of making expertise accessible to everyone? Um, and I think that, that'll take a really long time. Well, sure it will. Excellent. Good, good. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of people in, in, who are watching today, and uh, they would want to know, or they have uh, their own uh, dream in life to maybe start their own tech company one day, or mm -hmm. even, even if it's not technology-related, any startup that they would have. What advice do you would you have for them? What do you feel was the most important, one or two most important things that you feel kind of set you on on this path, or which which was critical for your success today? Mm -hmm. uh, what advice would you have uh, for, for for people who want to become entrepreneurs? Yeah, so I think if it's um, if we're talking about the in the context of like uh, a technology business or a software company. Um, I think the most important thing is a team to have uh, to have a team that complements each other well. That there is so much unknown that you're going to go through in terms of like discovering mm. uh, discovering whether the problem you're actually working on is useful or not. Right. Or um, so I'll, I'll give you a, a quick example. Like within our team, we argue a lot, all the time, right. every single day. But the mm. way we argue is very constructive. That we're not kind of just angry at each other or trying right. to put each other down. It's about like just uh, like intellectual arguments mm. about trying mm. to move the thing forward. And I think if you don't have that in place, it's just going to be a lot of bickering and fighting going right. on because it's right. just really hard. Uh, someone's going to have an idea. Somebody else's idea is going to be different. How do we move forward? And I think um, if the team is wrong, nothing else matters. So I think, uh, I think team is incredibly important. Excellent. No, that's that's some great information. Uh, great information there. Um, what what questions do you have? Uh, do you have any questions about a startup that you may be working on? Do you need any guidance? Do you need any advice? Uh, I'm going to be putting uh, Reza's uh, Twitter handle on on the screen, sharing it with you. So please feel free to reach out to him and ask him any questions uh, that you may have. Again, I hope you have enjoyed today's episode. Uh, if you would like to see more episodes like this, please do feel free and reach out to us. Uh, again, I hope you've enjoyed the episode. And uh, Riza, once again, it, it was a pleasure yeah. having, you, having you on the show. And uh, I hope you have enjoyed today's episode. And I look forward to seeing you again next week. Take care. Bye-bye.